Today I have a bonus Valentine's video. They're all new. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to start off with one of these tinsel wreaths. Mine came from Goodwill, but you can certainly get these at Dollar Tree or at the Dollar General. You're going to start by removing all of this tinsel. So I'm just clipping one piece and then it's just wound around these little spike things that stick out on the side. We're going to remove all that tinsel just like this. You just wind them back and forth and then you're going to take some type of a cutter and remove those little spikes. We won't be needing those. So to get your frame all clean like this and be sure that you trim those down so you don't cut your fingers. Get them down as low and blunt as you can. I'm going to use a detailing cloth from Dollar Tree, which I'm going to cut into about four inch strips, I think. And then I'm going to be using this to wrap this frame to take that stiffness out of it. I want this to be a soft looking heart. So we're going to wrap this underneath. It doesn't have to be beautiful as long as you get good coverage and just glue this down on your frame. I'm trying my best to keep the shape of the heart because when you add bulk, sometimes you can lose your original shape and I don't want to do that. I just want to make it a little bit thicker and more cushioned looking. So I'm going to try to put all of my glued parts to the back so that the front is nice and smooth. And you can do this any way that you like. Use your clips here and there to give you extra hand if you need it. For the bottom, I'm just showing you here. I slowed it down to show you how we're going to wrap the bottom. So you get a nice, clean, full coverage. Just like that. You can certainly stop this and back it up and watch it again if you need to. And then just glue it here and use a clip if you need to hold it down for a moment. This is stretchy. Um, you can pull it a good bit and kind of maneuver it. So that's what I've done here. I'm just pulling it up and just going to close that gap that is in the back. Next, I'm going to take this fabric that I found at Dollar Tree around Christmas time. I've cut this into strips as well. And I'm just going to start putting this on the top. So I want to put my glued pieces in the back. Remember, keep all of your work in the back so that the front is nice and neat and smooth. I'm not going to pull too tightly on this fabric. It doesn't have any stretch, but that's not a problem. But I want this to look kind of almost pillowy. So you can make some little darts where you need to to make this lay down because it doesn't stretch. So you're going to have to fold it over. Put all that on the back though. Keep the front nice and neat. We're going to do the same process down here at the point of this heart that we did with the other cloth. I'm going to wrap around the back and then pull it around the front just like that. Add some glue and press it down. Wrap what you have left around the back, glue it down, and then you can start your next strip of fabric. Remember, glue it in the back. And you're gonna go all the way around. You are gonna have a little gap there on the bottom, which is not gonna be a problem. I'm gonna show you how we can patch that to make it nice and uniform. You're just gonna take a little remnant and glue it down. And just so simple, just like putting a, pat, a patch on a pair of jeans, right? Okay, so now that's complete. And I like the look of this. I think this will be pretty for a farmhouse Valentine's heart. You could stop here if you wanted to. But we're going to add a little bit more and I'm going to show you how. So the hanger here is brown and I want it to look a little more blended, a little more soft, continue with that soft look. So I'm just taking a pipe cleaner, wrapping it around the bottom part of that, and then I'm going to weave it in and out of that loop, wrapping it all the way around that plastic loop until I get back to the other side. It's these little finishing touches that you do that really bring a little something extra to your projects and really give a more, more high-end look. You know, you took a little extra time, you did a little, just a little bit more work and really stepped it up. So see what a difference that makes? That's so cute. 
Now you can get little hanging sign like these from Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart, wherever. I got mine at the thrift store. And I'm just gonna hang it around the back. Look how you can straighten out your ribbon. Just put your scissors under there and pull it down and it'll make that loop come out. I'm just using my fingers to twist on that ribbon that's already there. I don't mind that ribbon, it's fine. Pulling out the loops of that bow and fluffing it up just a bit. Now you can glue down your heart if it has any dimensions, if you don't want the movement in there. It's whatever you choose. These little rosettes came from Dollar Tree and there are, I think it was at Christmas time, and there are brown and red and I love these. I know they have some foam hearts too that would work great but I'm trying to use what I have. So a lot of things that you use at Christmas time or find at Christmas can be used also for Valentine's Day and maybe even 4th of July if you wanna think of it that way, lots of reds. So just start stacking those hearts, I mean those uh, flowers in there any way that you like. You could use regular greenery here if you wanted to, but I'm trying to keep it really, really simple and rustic farmhouse looking. So just add the glue where you need it and then I'd really like a rosette on the top, but you see how bulky this is on the bottom? What I'm gonna do is take my scissors, cut down, don't go past the thread that's holding it together, but trim it all down around that bottom piece. Trim, 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 cutting it down and making it as flat as I can make it on the bottom without it coming apart. I'm gonna add some glue and then press it down firmly for a minute or two until it is glued down and it looks cute up there, I like it. Now you just trim up, you know it's burlap so it does have little parts and bits that need to be trimmed. You can go ahead and do that. And then you have this beautiful little simple wreath made from Dollar Tree things. What do you think? All right, on to the next one. I'm gonna use a sign that I got at Dirt Cheap, but I think it came from the Target Dollar Spot originally. You can use any type of little rectangular sign that you want for this. You can use one with the frame or without. These are little scrabble pieces that came in a little bag and I got these from Dirt Cheap as well. And the hearts I got from the thrift store. I'm gonna use my antiquing wax, of course, and a baby wipe. I don't want a heavy finish, so I'm not using a paintbrush and I'm not gonna pour it right on there because I want this to be very light. So now I'm just adding that color with that white right on to the heart. Now I think on this first heart, I put it on the front and the back and then it occurred to me that maybe it's not the best idea to put it on the back because that's whatever surface that you're gonna be sticking down, the glue's not gonna wanna stick on that wax. So just keep that in mind and only do the sides that you'll be seeing and leave the other part alone. I'm gonna do that with all my hearts. There was a little bit of paint on that one, so I just scratched it off, little dot of green paint. The more you put on, the darker it will be. You need to be sure that it's dry and show you just a slight difference in the chips. I went ahead and stained my chips very lightly also. Then you can decide how you wanna put your little pieces down. So, you could do it on the bottom in the corner, you could do it in the center. Certainly if you do not have these little chips, you can use um, your Cricut if you have a Cricut machine and write Valentine's if you wanted to. Or you could do uh, stickers. Dollar Tree has a huge variety of stickers. You could use those instead. So I'm playing around to decide where I want to put these in here. There's lots of ways we could combine them. And I love the fact that my hearts are different thicknesses and different sizes and shapes. Okay, so I think this is what I'm gonna do. And in order to get my Valentine's word straight, I've just went and went ahead and taken my ruler here, and made myself a light line where I can slightly overlap my letters when I glue them down. I'm gonna take my hearts and start placing those back down in the frame. Finally found the way that I like the best. You can also get little heart pieces, they're little wood pieces at Dollar Tree, and they're just like the little ornaments that hang, but you can certainly use those, and you can also do stickers with this instead, or you could paint or draw, or again, use your Cricut, whichever one you wanna do. Now I've got them all placed down, this is how they look. And so this frame comes with a hook on the top, but if you want it to stand, 
You can very simply take your Jenga blocks. I went ahead and stained mine, but left one side with no stain and just glue these down on the bottom. If you stand these up and place them on there, it's gonna make it more flat uh, and ensure that it is standing up at the right angle. I learned the hard way a long time ago, so let me spare you some, some aggravation. I wanted to add just one more little element. So I'm gonna take a thin red ribbon, and this is just a scrap that I probably got off of an ornament at Christmas time. I kinda hang on to them in a jar and I'm gonna make a heart just for this heart in the middle. Very, very simple. It's cute and small. There you go, what do you think? On to the next one. This little sign came from Dollar Tree and it is not in the Valentine section, but you'll find it. These are some thrifted hearts that I have. They came off of another sign and I pulled them all off. Took the staples out of the back. Now I'm just showing you, Dollar Tree now has one of these little spatula tools. You can use these to lift these up without tearing apart your words. They also have staples, so be very careful and pull those out so that you don't hurt yourself. I'm taking some doilies. You can also get these at Dollar Tree. Mine were thrifted. And then I have a scrap of drop cloth that I'm gonna use to cover up an old sign. Not entirely sure where the sign came from. I've used it a few times. I'm gonna trim it down so that's a little more workable. You can trim it down even further as long as you have enough to overlap and neatly cover up your edges. So I'm just putting down my line of glue and protecting my fingers and pressing that down into there. I'm gonna pull it firmly and pull the other side. And then this is how we'll do the ends so they won't be bulky. You just cut at an angle at, from the sign underneath outward, and then you can just tuck that under, almost like if you were wrapping a present, or wrapping a gift. You should still be in that mindset since Christmas is just over with. Fold it over and glue it down. They get nice crisp edges and nice flat corners. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my doilies and decide where I want them to go. My projects from last year, if you've watched my mega video um, that I put out this year of last year's items, I use doilies as well. But this one's gonna be a little bit different and I really like it. Be sure you protect your surface when you're using your glue stick. These doilies are very delicate and they have lots of holes, which means the glue will go right through the holes onto your surface. So just keep that in mind, you'll need to be wiping that up. Gently press these down, firmly and gently press. You do not want to pull on these because you will rip them. And then continue along. I like the way that it looks with the white and the red staggered. But if you like pink, you can certainly use more pink. I'm going to use pink, red, and white in this sign. Alright, so once they're all glued down, you're going to take that sign and thankfully, the glitter does not come off of these. I thought I might have to do some work, but I did not have to. Yeah, this was with the little girl stuff, like the kind of the preteen things. That's where this particular original sign came from. You know, the one with the love on it. And then I'm gonna start layering on some of these hearts. I decided to use the light brown and the pink rather than the dark brown. I think it just looks better. It blends better together. And I'm just gonna start placing those down. I've got a, kind of got a pattern where they're a little bit toward the top, little off center of the doilies that are underneath them. But I like this layered look. I think it's sweet. It looks like little cookies on there, little treats. Okay, so I'm gonna take a piece of twine you can use whatever you have. You can use ribbon, you can use jute. Tie knots in both ends. Put your backing on. If you're gonna be giving this away, be sure. Now mine looks terrible, but I'm just giving you some inspiration to show you how you can cover it, cover up all your seams. And then you're gonna just glue down your, your twine. And there's your little sign. That's so simple. Here's the next and my favorite one. It's also the last one. 
I'm going to use this bundle of roses and this bundle happened to have come in the things that were donated to me by my very sweet donator who gave to the channel. I'm going to use some foam. I'm also going to use my cutters. I use this thrifted heart basket that I have. It's about 12 inches across and probably 16 inches tall. I'm just going to cut this and I like to use my metal ruler to do it and then break the pieces off so that they are underneath the level of that basket. I don't want to be seeing that green poking out. Um, you're not going to see it. It's a little bit showing, but not much. So I'm making sure that my green is where it needs to be. I'm trying to get an idea of how tall I need the tallest ones to be. And then keeping that in mind, I'm cutting them off. You can always trim up later more that needs to be trimmed, not a problem. Look how beautiful this greenery is. Look at the little rosebuds on it. I just had to take a minute and show you this. Stunning. They're so realistic looking. Okay. Now these just need to be poked down in here. I put the tallest one in the back. I want this to have kind of a dome shape. So I'm going to do three in the back. The two on the sides are, you can see here what I'm showing you. They're kind of lower than the one there. There's another piece with a rosebud. And some of them have, um, it's almost like baby's breath or something white in there with it. And it's really pretty. So come, coming outward and downward in the front, about the same height as the one in the back, but more forward is where I put the next one. And then the same thing here. So we're working toward the front and continue to put your roses in there. Some people take the greenery off their flowers and I just don't like that look. Not for something like this. I want the greenery in there. Um, rustic is a big deal for me. I'm not into the modern thing, so um, I like to have that green in there. I love my pops of green. I love things to look realistic. Like you could actually find something like this in nature and then bring it into your house and do it. You know, I really like this. So I'm just adding a few more, just a little bit taller in the back, just to give it a little more. I had more roses to work with, so I'm fitting those in where I can fit them. I'm going to put the last rose in the front, and then I'm going to take a piece of greenery that I had left. I guess one of the flowers came off. I'm going to put it on a pick, and then add it right down. Looks pretty, doesn't it? All angles, y'all. Look at it at all angles. I'm going to add that one last piece of greenery because we're not going to waste it. And then we're going to work on a bow to go right in that space. So this ribbon is from burlap.com. They got in touch with me and asked me if I would be interested in trying their products. And I am very satisfied with this ribbon. I can't speak to all of it. I haven't tried it all yet, but I can tell you right now, I love this ribbon. It is not wired. It has a frayed edge and it's a red and white stripe. Gorgeous and so easy to work with. Surprisingly, because a lot of ribbons that don't have wire, they're hard to manipulate and hold their form, but that is not the case with this one and you'll see. I really put this one through the ringer and made a stacked large bow and still had a lot of body in the ribbon. So continuing along, you saw the kind of bow that I made. I'm going to leave that string in the back and just cut it off here on the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing with the next one, only I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger because we're going to have the smallest, a medium, and then we're going to have a large one. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm working on the medium or the one that's going to be in the middle, and I'm tying these all with jute. You do not at this point want to be using a bulky... Um, a zip tie because it's just going to be too much in the middle. Your bow is not going to sit the way it should and you're going to have a hard time holding on to all of it. It's just easier to use a strong jute in this situation. So I'm making sure I have the graduation of size correct on my ribbon and continuing around. Now you can't put the ribbon back on once you cut it off, but you can always add a little something extra if you need to. Keep that in mind. Don't be hard on yourself when you feel like you've made an awful mistake. So many things can be corrected in crafting. It is not a big deal and we do not sweat the small stuff here. All right, now we're gonna start assembling this beautiful shabby chic looking bow. I'm going to stack it and tie the first layer on.
making sure it's not going anywhere. We're not gonna need that, so we're gonna cut that part off. Looking good so far. Now we're going to start thinking of the next one. This is just me struggling to turn the bow the right way. Also not a big deal. See, I fixed it. So we're gonna put that other one on top, wrap its string all the way around and leave it on. We're gonna double knot it, triple knot it, whatever makes you feel best. And then look at this bow. This is without even being fluffed. Oh, I love this bow and it's gonna be perfect for this basket. This one is going on my door this year. Go ahead and trim up your ends. You can do angles, you can do dovetails, whatever you like here, whatever floats your boat. And then we're gonna need a way to fix it and I'm gonna use a pick. I'm making a pick with some hot glue across the tie, a little extra piece of greenery wire here and then I'm tying it in so that it dries in there. Once it is completely dry and cool to touch, you can stick that pick straight down in that foam and then fix that bow back and look at this little beauty. I love this. It's my favorite one of all of them. Give me a thumbs up if you're liking this bonus video. Go ahead and do your finishing touches and fluffs. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was so good to see you this Saturday, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!